Welcome back to the VoiceOver Gurus podcast. This is part two of our time with Paul Strickwerda. So much good information that we had to break it up into two podcasts for you. Now, if you're looking to get some training or even just find out if VO is for you, head to our website, voiceover.guru, and you can easily take one of our online courses and get some coaching with us one-on-one as well. All right, here we go. Enjoy. This is the VoiceOver Gurus Podcast, real talk about the voiceover industry, with your hosts, Linda Bruno and J.J. Wilson. But I I remember when I met my wife, uh, I I had just, it was the time of invoice servers where people were just starting to go home and I was doing all my work on a nine inch <laughs> laptop with a mouse and I had the email in one corner and the script there and the pro tools over here. She says, how do you see that? <laughs> <laughs> and so we've, we've come a long way. I've got 14 <laughs> monitors now, yeah. mostly so I can watch the neighbors, but you know, um, it, it really has, but I miss the old days so much where we used yeah. to go to the studio. We were appreciated we were, you know, let's let's call the the big guys, oh, yeah. and we didn't have to audition. We didn't need an agent. We just knew that J.J. J. Wilson lived in Fort Lauderdale, and we want him Those for the this. Old old days. Yep. And you just go and you record spots with other people. Yep. That I miss so much. I, the the oh, two, yeah, three, four person spots were just the most fun yeah. I've ever had. If I you're mean, a social butterfly, this work is definitely not for you. <laughs> oh, no. Absolutely And get lonely. No. It's, it's, no. That's why it appeals to introverted people who would like to be by themselves and function best by themselves. Right. But I just miss the feedback. I miss having a director yes. doing everything he or she can to get the best read out of me. Yeah. I, just, I just came back. Um, this is a fun story. I, I'm also... Uh, the announcer at a farmer's market here in eastern oh, Pennsylvania, cool. where I live. It's the oldest outdoor farmer's market in the United States. And they heard that there was a voiceover said, well, we need a voice for the market. What do you think? Well, I thought, this is a great opportunity. Why not? I love my town. I want to give back to the people. So every Saturday, I'm in the midst of things where we have this farmer's market that attracts about four to 5,000 people wow. every Saturday. So it's really a big thing. And um, we're in Center Square in Easton. And they're big, big speakers hanging on the um, the, the lights, uh, so my voice can be heard all over town. And um, one of the people came up to me at the farmer's market and said, you know, I like your voice. I run this group of um, historical reenactors. Would you be interested in joining our group? Well, I'd never given it any thought. They said, hey, voiceovers. Farmer's market acting, why not? <laughs> you know, it's always good to make some new friends. <laughs> so this guy write scripts about things that really happened in our town. Like George Washington slept there and uh, 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 Benjamin Franklin came to our town. And it's all documented. And there were a number of Indian tribes that uh, signed treaties over there. So he takes these historic events and reenacts them during mm. dinner theater. Oh, I love so it. I became I part of that. <laughs> and um, to me, it opened up a whole new world because for the first time in my life, I had to memorize oh, the scripts. <laughs> What's that? You know? Yeah. Yeah. What? <laughs> I don't pages. think I can do that anymore. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, for, in the first production, I was Thomas Paine. And um, now I'm going to be William Penn in the new production. So we um, had a little rehearsal yesterday. And he he's a very good director, this guy, because he, he totally changed my take on the script. I had this script, a letter from William Penn. And I thought that was this guy was angry, he was scornful, and he was telling the people what, of Pennsylvania that, that they should listen to him and obey. But he said, no, not at all. This came from a place of love, from mm. understanding, wanted to convince people, completely different. And, you know, that's the perspective I miss when I'm just me and myself. Right. My exactly, studio. exactly. We had a special guest on uh, last week during one of our workouts, and... Having him involved, and I said this to him, we do car spots together. It's no big deal. But when he's involved and directs me, we always get something more special than me just sitting here, you know, banging out a car spot. And it that is, I I do miss that very, very much. 
Yeah. Because you yeah. go places that you wouldn't go on your own. You, you're absolutely living somebody else's imagination. He gave us. He gave one of the people a direction, and I went, "Are you out of your freaking mind?" Yeah. And they read it that way, and it, it was, was like, fantastic. <laughs> it was unbelievable. Yeah, and it made me realize again what you just said. I miss yeah. people. Because to, to me, it's a game. It's, it's like, okay, I'm completely neutral right now, and you have ideas. And mm-hmm. I'm going to bring your ideas to life, so let's play the game. Yeah, yeah exactly. And I've been fortunate I haven't been thrown out of the court <laughs> too many times, thank goodness. But to get good at that game is part of the secret, I think. The faster you can get to where mm-hmm. they are the more chance they'll call you again and go, this guy can go from doing this to doing this with but That's this why ingestion. getting the coaching in things and like these, the online yeah. voiceover workout are so essential. Exactly because right. Because it's, yes. especially exactly when we were talking right. about the other day, yeah. our students are in front of other students. So they're <laughs> having to... Their first time right, is pretty interesting. Ha- <laughs> the sweat is dripping down. There's Xanax all over their desk. They're feeling the it's nerves, just... <laughs> but they get through it, and they feel the pressure of what it would be yeah. like to be in a casting situation. Um, but they get the feedback, oh, which yeah. I think people are lucky to get that now these days with the various coaches that are doing yeah. it. I, I just have a quick question. Should I have been yes, recording this? Yes, like all the other times. Ah, oh, <laughs> sorry. Okay. <laughs> Let's start again. Okay, and take one. Well, JJ, you and uh, Paul have something in common, both with um, some health issues, but Paul has an interesting story about something. How long ago was this that uh, you had your situation? I'll tell you, let you tell it. <laughs> <laughs> My situation happened uh, three years ago um, in, in March. I was just going about my business in my studio, by myself, in the house, alone. And uh, from one moment to the other, I woke up and it was on the floor, paralyzed. I had no idea what was happening. Oh. I, how, I didn't even know how I got to the floor because you can see me now because we're, we're, we're on Zoom here. But I'm exactly in the same spot that I'm now. I was preparing the script. And when I woke up, I couldn't move. And literally the, ha- the left side of my body was paralyzed. And I, I, I don't know what prompted it, but I would... I felt like something was wrong with my face, too. Half of my face was completely wow. drooping. Yeah. And I, I spoke like this. Mm. I had to speak because I knew something was wrong and I couldn't reach my phone. And I, somebody had told me, no, if you, if you say, hey, Siri, call 911, yes. it will call 911. Yes. And so I go, hey, <laughs> oh, hey, no. hey. Sorry. Oh, God. I, oh, gosh. <laughs> And then it dawned upon me, I'm having a stroke. I'm having a stroke. And I'm also out of, out of air. And I had no idea for how long I had been pa- passed out on the floor. So I said, you know what? I'm alone in the house in a soundproof roof. I'm about to run oh. out of oxygen because I don't have ventilation in my, in my booth. It's mm-hmm. just, uh, my ventilation <laughs> is when I open the door. That's mm-hmm. it. And so I said, you know, guys... Uh, this is it. So I better say goodbye. And uh, uh, this is not going to end well. But then I heard people coming into the house. And what had happened was that my wife was at a different place. She was at a council meeting. She's a council member here. I was supposed to be at that meeting and I wasn't. And I'm always there where I say I will be. And she had this gut feeling that something was fundamentally wrong, that she should be very worried she still tells me I don't know where it yeah. comes from, but it's this I mean, it's this incredible thing that we have going yeah, between energy. one another. But mm-hmm. that that helps being married for at least fourteen years now. I feel that when there's something wrong with her, she has multiple sclerosis. She feels it when something wrong with me. And thank goodness, in that council meeting, we had the chief of police and the fire chief, and oh, um, she said, you know, "Could you please check in on Paul? Do wellness visit." And um, so when I heard some voices, I said, you know, I need to, with the last bit of energy that I have in me, I need to start knocking on the walls because that's the only way. And they, they finally heard me bang on the walls and open up this door here. And all of a sudden you could hear the air just completely suck into oh, the room again. God. And I felt like, you know, if you ever, if you ever did some snorkeling, you go deep down to the ocean bed. You go as long as you can until your 
running out of breath, and that last breath when you come up, the <gasps> yeah. and I came back to life again. Yeah. Then they transported me in a helicopter, first helicopter <laughs> in my life, to a, a stroke unit, and um, they threw my groins, put a, uh, um, a camera up, and the camera had kind of uh, an arm, a little robotic arm, and they were searching for a blood clot in my brain because what happened was that um, my heart beat. I ever, always had um, AFib, atrial fibrillation, so irregular fast heartbeat. And um, my heart had um, sent a blood clot to my brain, and that was causing a stroke. So during the operation, I woke up, and I could feel that oh. the tube was going through my body, oh, uh, into my brain, uh. gripping onto that you clot. You felt all that? And I felt all that, yes. I, it's, it was it was not painful because the brain doesn't feel pain, but oh I, I really feel. I did feel that I had a terrible headache, So, but I could feel it. And the only thing I really remember is that I looked into the eyes of my surgeon and he just looked at, he was somebody from India and his deep, dark brown eyes and looked at me and he just gave me this double wink, like, everything's going to be Aww. okay. We got it. And at that moment, this this arm at the end of the tube got got a grip of that blood clot and it sucked it out. And all of a sudden, I felt an intense wow. relief of pressure. And I passed wow. out again. So that's my, my, my stroke story. But the weirdest thing was when I, when I woke up after the sedation wore out, I could not speak. I lost the ability to oh. speak completely. And <laughs> for a voiceover, that's Seriously? the worst thing that can happen. I, yes. Yeah. Uh, I could make sounds, but I could make sense. And it's the same thing was happening in my head. It, my, my mind was spinning. Because what my brain was doing is rebuilding the connections that had been lost. Because mm -hmm. once you lose brain cells, they're not growing back, but you can grow new neural networks that take over from wow. where the old ones left off. Wow. So, right. so for the first couple of months, most of the things I could do was just sleep, 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 sleep to let the recovery take place. And then I finally started speech therapy, and I felt like a baby wow. again. Like with the little words, <laughs> like the, a, mouse, house, louse, wow. spouse, you know. <laughs> yeah, one syllable words, two syllable words. The syllables became sentences. The sentences became paragraphs. The paragraphs became chapters. And uh, it took me about a year and a half before I could record my first uh, audition. So, again. I mean, mentally, yeah, knowing sucks. that you weren't able to work, how, how <laughs> did you handle that aspect? Because I would be completely freaked out. Well, the, what saved me was really, I say, you know, I don't want to lose my voice. I don't want to lose my voice. But it, it's not literally only, but also figuratively, because I, I, to me, it's important in my life that I have a voice, that I can be of help to people. And so I said, at least I can write mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. And that's why my blog was a blessing. I thought about it for a minute and said, should I really do that? Should I tell the world, including my clients, that I'm out of commission and that right, I cannot right. speak anymore? because they might not ever hire me again. But then again, I said, you know, there's a reason I'm still here. Because on the way, they never told me, but on, on my way to the hospital, they lost me almost twice. So there's a right. reason why I'm still here. I say, I have a message to tell. I want to tell people about having a stroke, the dangers, what you need to do when you get a stroke so that you can help other people survive or should it happen to you. I want to tell people about what that's, that's like. And also that you can survive and and how important it is that you have a network of people around you who support Amen. you 100%. Not only the professional caregivers, but your friends, your family. Your wife. Mm -hmm. My wife, yeah. who saved my life. Mine saved mine mm -hmm. too. Definitely. And, um, yeah. and above, and, and also the voiceover community. I wanted to bring it up to thank them because there were nights in the hospital where I was completely disoriented. I didn't know what time it was. All you can hear was the, the instruments around you beeping. There's always something beeping, always people running, talking, administering medication. And I was completely disoriented. And what I would do is I would go to the internet, to Facebook, and um, write a little bit, and then read the responses from my colleagues and from my friends. Paul, you can make it. Oh, wow. We're thinking about you. We're praying for you. You can, you can do this, you know. You, you got this. And oh, that's um, great. still makes Aww. me emotional. 
Because they say sometimes, you know, all these social media, it's so superficial, you know, friends are not really friends. They're just friends because Facebook Some are. Some chooses are. to call it. But you really yeah. notice who your friends yes. are. And a couple of days in, I was still in the ICU. Uncle Roy Yokelson and uh, Mike Harrison, another voiceover friend of mine, he came to the ICU because it's Passover, and he brought me a whole Passover <laughs> kit with matzo ball soup and gefilte fish. And, that and sounds like Uncle Roy. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's, that was incredible. <clears throat> and then Trish Bashani, another wonder, wonderful colleague of mine, came and she said, can I bring you some Dutch treats? So she brought me some Dutch throw waffles, and Paul Stefano came. And all through my recovery, people That's stayed nice. in touch. And that just meant so incredibly much That's to so me. Nice. I said, I need to reach out to those people. Let them know how I'm doing and how grateful I am that they are there for me when I needed them. It is great with the voiceover community, and I tell the students this too, that they should join because there are a lot of really supportive people because we're all in the same boat, you know, and we're all going through it. There are a few that aren't so supportive and some people that are, you know, with their own ulterior motives. But I, I have found the majority of people in this business have been pretty cool. Yes, I think they're, uh, what do I, well, I think it helps that we're not always in the spotlight, that we're, I call ourselves sometimes nobodies because we don't have a body, we're just a voice, right? Right. We're kind of anonymous and that makes people kind of, um, uh, Here's a word finding thing, but it's unpresumptuous. Is that I a word? I think so, right? <laughs> Not I like it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll keep hey, it. Hey, Siri. There. Oh, no, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Don't yeah. answer me. Yeah. yeah. There's, because I used to work in te television too back in the Netherlands, and there's a difference between radio folk and television people. Yes. <laughs> television people, they're always with their face on TV, and that does yeah. something to them. Yeah. And that makes them think a little bit more highly of themselves. And they always feel like, oh, I'm in the spotlight. I have to behave in a certain way, <laughs> be a certain way. And that's not always pleasant. Yeah. Whereas voiceovers, they're, they're just in the studio doing their thing. They're just talking to a microphone, bringing text to life, breathing life into words, making, making I think it's art what we do. And they're just regular normal people. And uh, it doesn't matter what you look like. Um, where you it come from. How exciting. It, it's just the most heartwarming come. How excited you got yesterday when I said, oh, we're not going to do video tomorrow. You go, oh, great. I can wear my pajamas. <laughs> 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 now, you wrote a book, right? You, it's, it's been out for a good mm -hmm. long while, right? Yes, it's, I think, about five years. I'm writing oh, a new one, by the way. It's, uh, yes, uh, I'm just thinking about a good title, but it's probably something like the self-sustaining voiceover. But uh, I wrote a book called Making Money in Your PJs which is really a compilation of many of the blog posts that I've written. Mm. And I, I think that's one of the advantages of writing because, um, you know, there's a lot of people that get into podcasting, and which is great. I love podcasting because you can experience people in real time. You can hear their voices and you can hear the inflections and the emotions coming through. And you don't really have that when you're, when you're reading someone's writing. But one of the advantages is that I can just compile these things and put them into a book and then mm. it becomes something that people can keep and mm -hmm. look in again. And and uh, it's, it's it's been selling very well. I think about, I, at this point, I've sold about 6,000 wow. copies, oh, which good. I think is pretty decent for quite a small right. community that we live in. And in uh, there's certain parts in Europe, there's some universities that have a voiceover part of their drama school. They use that oh, book how now cool. as, uh, as part of the That's teaching That's really material. cool. Yeah. I like yeah. how on your website, too, yeah. for your blog, you have everything categorized by topic. So it's easy to access if yeah. what you're interested in. So, Voice actor websites did an amazing job. And um, one, one of the requirements for me was that my voiceover website would not look like a voiceover website because it was very mm -hmm. blog-centered. Because... You know, I um, even though you see me with a microphone in there, you know, got to have me in a microphone. It's all about the blog. That's how people find me. That's why people go to me. Interesting. And most people know me because of my blog and not because of my voiceovers. Because yeah. half of the stuff I do in Dutch, so people who speak English have never <laughs> heard of me. Right. And most of the stuff that I do is for the European market as well. So uh, people in America don't know me. My only claim to fame was that I did 
a commercial for IHOP, but that was with a British accent pretending to be sort of a David Attenborough <laughs> thing. But I'm not very well known as a voiceover in the United States, but more as an author. So mm-hmm. I wanted to be this web, website all about my blog. And through my blog, people go to my uh, to, to the other page. Nethervoice.com. Nethervoice.com. Yes, yes, yes. I'm known in the United States for my voiceovers and a couple of other things, but that's a different <laughs> podcast. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us, Paul. That. This has been... But that, that's amazing how you came back from the stroke. Unbelievable. Um, yeah. I've I not... It's I, it's similar. I, I just one morning woke up three years ago and uh, stood up and walked across the living room to go into the studio, and I had this horrible pain. And I went out on the front porch, and of course I lit a cigarette <laughs> and uh, called my wife, and I said, something is terribly wrong. And I started throwing up and, and keeled over at the ring camera, recorded the entire heart attack. God. It was wonderful. And I ended up in the... I drove myself to the hospital. Another <laughs> genius move by J.J. <laughs> Wilson. Um, but I got there, and they, they said, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Wilson, but you've had a, a heart attack, and it looks like you had one several years ago. And I went, ah? <laughs> <laughs> and they said, you need a quadruple bypass. And I said, you have the wrong results, and I got up and went out and had a cigarette. <laughs> what? <laughs> but they did the quadruple, and for me, the recovery was more mental. Uh, my sternum still hurts after three years from them cutting it wide open, but uh, there are things that you just have to get by. But this is what destroyed me, mm-hmm. my brain. Nine days after I got home, my wife said, it's time. And I said, time for what? I can't go to the bathroom yet. And she goes, get in the studio because you just got an order for 160-second spots. <sighs> and I cried through most of them. I couldn't barely breathe. I was bleeding from my stitches. But in our business, we do everything we can to get back to where we were because that's a showbiz. That's how I was raised. My father was in radio. He was a voice actor. And my mother was a te- was The show must go on. And we, you just That was the first session I'd missed in 33 wow. years Man. when I had my heart attacks. But uh, I finally got control of the brain part of it, and I'm in good health now, and I'm really glad you are too. That's amazing to come back from that. You would never know. No. You would never know. I'm going to get a zipper no. tattoo, though, on my uh, <laughs> thing in case they ever have to go in again. They can just, you know, unzip. But it's yeah. uh, it's it's hard. It's hard. And uh, the stresses yeah, of yeah. life. And, and But you also encountered the kindness of people in ways that you oh, never thought Oh, I did. It was possible. incredible. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. People and, from my wife's office were coming yeah. to visit me. Yeah. And the, the, the things on Facebook and... and I was astounded at how many people I didn't know cared. Wow. Mm-hmm. And it really did help yeah. me get through it. I It gave me the strength to go, you know what? I've got to keep going. There really are people out there who care yeah. what happens to me. Yeah. And yeah. it was the toughest thing I ever did. Mm-hmm. Toughest thing well, I ever did. I'm glad you're here, too. Oh, thank you. But thank the, you. It's the good to be here. things people do to just get on video, you know, that's, yes. just don't do that again. No, I won't. <laughs> I won't. Learn some lessons. But uh, would you join me for a piece of pizza and a cigarette later? <laughs> pizza, yes. Cigarette, no. Okay. <laughs> Paul, I want to thank you for joining us. This has been fantastic. This is this is absolutely yeah. wonderful to meet you. you via you know Zoom and and connect and and on, especially on so many levels that we agree upon. You know. Yeah, I love your unpeeling. I'm, I'm pe- going to use that if I may. <laughs> it's a great teaching tool to yes, to get is. them absolutely. to come out of their shell and. I'm yeah. going to say, how do you know what's in there that you don't want us to see is an unbelievably fantastic. So you want to follow, um, it's your Instagram great. handle is what, in, just Nether Voice? It's, it's Nether, a, voice. Nether mm-hmm. voice. And Nether super, Voice, okay. Super easy. You can find me on Facebook at Nether Voice and my website is Definitely. And, and for those of you okay. looking to get to the next level of your voiceover journey, you know, you have the training, you have your demos, and now you're like, now what? We've talked about this before. You know, contact Paul and 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 find out yeah, to help you find your uniqueness because that's what's going to make you yes. stand out. It isn't about yeah. imitating anyone else, but um, or how good your right. website looks. <laughs> yeah, uh, pa- Paul, I meant to tell you that that same uh, director that I work with that I love very much called me the other day and he said I just had a talent call me and said, "Do you want to see my studio?" And he said, "No." <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't care what it looks like. I just care what it sounds exactly. like. But exactly. People are worried about the wrong things exactly. here. <laughs> yeah, but it's got a pillar. <laughs> I'm like, Great. You have to put foam on it. <laughs> well, thank you. We've taken up enough of your time, Paul. <laughs> yes, Paul, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. A pleasure. pleasure Very inspiring pleasure. and continued good health. Thank you to, to you. you too thank and you. to you, Linda. Thank you. It was wonderful to connect with you. I think we should do this time. again tomorrow. <laughs> it's the summertime, so the workouts are a little sporadic, guys, but we are still going to be doing them. So let's yeah. just work to hang with Paul for a few weeks. <laughs> well, come on. <laughs> but just keep watching the website. We're about to announce the July um, workouts, and um, hopefully we'll all see you guys soon. I would like Paul. Work- to <laughs> you want to coach workouts. people, Paul? Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you can say anything you want. We would. I, I yeah, would love you want to, coach to have you in one with of our us? workouts. Oh, well, just, uh, we'll talk I'd about that. I'll send there. you a no, check. I'd be, I'd, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Will you do it for Let's five dollars? <laughs> <laughs> this is for a post a post podcast conversation. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. Yes, this is not going. Uh, this is not the ending I would have hoped to have had. Yeah. Nethervoice dot com. That's the ending. No, I'll right. <laughs> yes, I'll tell you a story about this. Um, we're off, off mic. Oh, wait, right let me now, just wrap right? up real quick. Sorry. <laughs> that wraps up another That's episode up, okay. of the Voice Over Guru's <laughs> podcast. And we'll see you all again soon. Bye.